What's going on, Chicago Tough Sports fans? It's Anthony and Hitman here. What's going on, Hitman? Yo, what's up? Well, we are here. Well, as everyone knows, it's football season again. NFL kicked off finally. And Hitman and I are here to indulge you in some some beautiful Bears information. We're gonna we're gonna <laughs> scratch, we're gonna scratch that itch that you have that that must need information and content that you've been craving. So, uh, so is that what we're we doing? There it is. That's what we're doing. We're, we're scratching everyone's itch. Oh. That Fomunda itch. All right. Well. <laughs> All right. Well. So, I, I guess we'll go ahead and do that. Yeah. So, um, as everyone knows, the Bears are are one and zero. Oh. Nice, nice little comeback. Bear down. Chicago Bears. Yep. Yep. Oh, with that being said, Hitman, take it away, man. You're 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 the local you're the local Bears expert here. I wouldn't say local Bears expert. I'm just a fan. You um, you, know, no, it, you know more than half of the dumbasses we hear on the radio. That might be true. That's very true. <laughs> that might be. That's very true. And some of that stuff, you know, I, I, I hear on, on the, the score, which is honestly why I listen to more podcasts now. Yeah. Um, when, when it comes to, you know, bear stuff, just because you, you, you get a narrative yeah. um, that it's not cool. But, uh, yeah, no. Um, Bears being 1-0 and after a ugly, but – Entertaining football game, you know, it was ugly in the sense of how both teams played, and you know, you had the field at one point had like five inches of water. That was football. Weather. Towards the end. That's football weather. I, I'll, I'll say this: I, I've talked to plenty of people that can't wait for the Bears to move to Arlington Heights and get a dome. <laughs> so, uh, but if you are a Bears fan, and if you are a if you are a Ryan Poles truther or a Ryan Poles fan, this was the game for you. Um, the fact that his draft picks played well, his free agents picked up, uh, picked up well. I mean, his free agents played well. Um, and also, you know, the head coach that he hired, along with the coaches that his head coach hired. Yeah, but um, before, coach before, we, game. before you go on, can you do me a favor and just tell me how to say his last name? Here's how I say it. Eberflus. Oh, it's Eberflus. Eberflus. Okay. Yeah, Eberflus. All right, I didn't yeah. mean to put you off. No, no worries. No, I, I get it. I get it. Um, yeah, I mean, like I said, if, if you are a Ryan Poles fan, this, this was the game for you. Um, before we get started with all of this, you know, I, I know we haven't done a bear show in a while. Yep. Um, there's been a lot of things going on within um, – not necessarily Bears Twitter, but but just the the national media and there's some fans that may not may not have liked Ryan Poles' um, positioning on free agency or draft or whatever. Look, people need to understand that <laughs> the Bears were in a horrible shape when they let go Matt Nagy and Ryan Pace. I can agree. The Bears had an old, bad roster, <laughs> along with about five draft picks. So Ryan Poles had to go out and try to sign free agents. He had, basically, he had, a, he had 30, no, I'm sorry, he had like $22 million to spend, but he also had to fill, I don't know, 40 to 50 you know, you know, spots on the roster. That's not a lot of money. So you couldn't go out and and spend top dollar for any free agent. Matter of fact, you didn't necessarily want to because there was really nobody out there. And and I get the fact that yeah, you see all these wide receivers or the Bears could have had this wide receiver. Look, I'm not paying Christian Kirk what he got. No, that that was kind of ridiculous what he got paid. Like. I'm not saying you know, not not to get off track. Christian Kirk's not a bad receiver, but I don't feel he's worth the money that he got. Anyways, go on. I'm sorry. Oh no, 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 no. But you know, you, you had you know players that did, did these ridiculous, you know, 
contracts, and the Bears just not in a place to where they can do that. Yeah. Maybe next year when they have over a hundred hundred million to spend. But in my honest opinion, I don't think they'll go go off on a spending spree next year. You know, next year agency. And then we go to the draft. Instead of taking a position of me, you they took the best player on their board. And that and that's what you do. And Ryan Paul flat out said, like, you know, as much as people want to talk about we need to build a, you know, build, build, give Justin Fields weapons and get him an offensive line, they also need to fill the best team around Justin Fields to help him. So if the best player on your board happens to be a defensive player, that can create turnovers and give the defense short field, I mean, offense short field, then you do that. Yep. Yep. Are, are you talking about, uh, what's his name? Uh, number four. What's his, I, I forgot his name. Not Eddie Jackson. They drafted uh, two defensive backs, uh, Kyler Gordon and also Jaquan Brister. That's what, okay. And I know there was fans that, that wanted, um, wanted the Bears to take a wide receiver. They ended up taking a wide receiver in the third round. Okay. And Bella Jones Jr. So um, I just think that, you know, Bears fans have to know that this is going to be a very prudent uh, approach to what, you know, what Bears fans are not even used to. You know, Ryan Pace was the guy that went out and traded multiple draft picks to go up and get, you know, Mitchell Trubisky or spend the money and stuff like that. This team is not there yet. Okay. Team is not there. Uh, so, you know, Bears fans, be patient. You know, it, it, it'll be good. And it, which leads me to, you know, the first game. Look, this team is, is going to be fundamentally sound, well-coached, and disciplined. And that showed up on Sunday. The yeah. Bears had three penalties on, um, on Sunday. None on offense. They had no penalties on offense. Yeah. And which, awesome. if you go back to Matt Nagy, you go back to Matt Nagy, you, you had a delay a game, you had some holdings, you got some things like that. Um, but, you know, they didn't have any. And they were actually the least penalized team in preseason. And that's when you play your second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth stringers. Yeah. And they still were, you know, one of the least penalized teams in, in, uh, in the preseason. And that, and that translated. Um, also, they played hard. They, didn't. they absolutely played hard. Um, you know, whether it's, you know, getting seven or eight guys to the ball for a tackle, or you had, or you had offensive linemen and wide receivers hustling yeah. um, to make blocks. Um, you know, you look at the offensive linemen uh, making blocks for couple of times when Justin Fields ran out out of the pocket. Then you also look at the wide receivers, uh, Ecrimonia St. Brown, um, you know, his blocks on, um, on that Dante Pettis touchdown, you know, that was huge. That was huge. But, you know, and, and that's watch, part of watching, that. Watching that offense in week one, it is very fundamental, very fundamental football on both sides of the ball. They didn't, that offense wasn't trying to be too cute or too clever with anything. It was just, just go out there, throw the ball, hand the ball off, and that's it. Next play. Yeah. No. Could have been better. Sure. But you know, it was it was raining, and and both teams had issues. Yeah. Both team teams had issues. You know, whether it's throwing or or running, it's just that the Bears were able to take advantage of it. That's all. That's at, at the end of the day, the Bears made made more plays than the 49ers. That that's basically what it was. But, um, I mean, like I said, the offensive line, I thought, did a, you know, decent enough job. Um, Braxton Jones, their rookie fifth-round pick, was okay. Um, look, you're not going to win every matchup against a perennial all-pro and Joey Bosa. But just don't embarrass yourself, and I don't think he embarrassed himself. Um, Tevin Jenkins, uh, you're talking about a guy who – about six weeks ago was probably was going to get either cut or traded. And, and now he, according to pro football focus was, was the second highest rated uh, offensive lineman on that, in that group behind uh, Larry Vaughn. So, um, 
you know, it positive stuff, man. Positive stuff that you know that they can take into the next game. I know we'll talk about you know Green Bay in a couple of days, but you know they did. You know the offensive line did well. Uh, defensively, I thought the pass rush was excellent. Yep, um, I, I I thought they got after uh, Lance. I thought, you know, they still gave up some gashing um, um, runs up the middle. Uh, they got out of their their uh, not their blocks, but they got out of their gap. And and that's what one of the things that that's with this defense that's pretty interesting is the fact that if they play a one gap defense that if you're if you get taken out of your gap and then another guy tries to cover for that guy who just taken out of his gap you just you just make a gash. Yeah. But the good news is is that that particular defense is designed for you to um, you can get a lot of yards, but they're they're basically just like okay, can you go 15 plays without making a mistake? And that's basically what that defense is. And there was a couple of times where the 49ers made mistakes. Yeah. You know, you had the Debo Samuel fumble caused by uh, Jalen Johnson. And then you had the interception by Eddie Jackson. Mm -hmm. So the defense made plays. Defense made, made the plays that they need to. And, you know, it, it, at least Bears fans, at least some smart Bears fans knew that the defense was going to be pretty good. You, you still, they're, they're still talent on this on, on that side of the ball and hell there's still talent on this roster especially offensively it may not be named talent but there's still talent nonetheless yeah they they don't have the big superstar name yet if no the big superstar name no um this victory how how much of it do you credit the weather to both teams got to have to play in it okay no, I'm just asking because um, I, on Twitter and other social media platforms, um, even word of mouth at work, uh, people are saying, oh, the 49ers gave up the game because of the weather. And I, I basically had the same answer. Well, the Bears played on the same field in the same weather, well, and same rainstorm. And so I, I, I'm just wondering where you stand, where you stand with the. The weather situation. Both both teams had to play in it, and then on top of that, if memory serves me correct, the Bears were up two scores by the time the torrential rain came. Anyway. Okay. Okay. Yeah, uh, you don't. I don't hear or see any of that. So about how. Yeah, the I mean it, it. Yeah, I mean it's uh, the Bears were up nineteen to ten with like seven or eight minutes left, and that's when you know the skies opened up. So, I mean, I, I, I don't – both teams had to play in it. Um, you know, both teams struggled at times. Both quarterbacks struggled to make plays, especially Justin Fields in the first half and Trey Lance in the second half. It, yeah, it's just that the Bears – the 49ers beat themselves because of penalties, because, because they were a dumb football team. Yeah. Shit, I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, that's the thing. Like, some, hey, sometimes you – I'd rather be lucky than good. Yeah. So I, I want you to touch base a little bit on uh, that DB, number four. What's his name again? Eddie Jackson? No, 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 no. Um, the guy who had the two. Number nine. Uh, number nine. There you go. He had the two the two interceptions. Well, he only had one interception. I thought he had two. I'm sorry. He didn't have any. Jaquan Brisker? Yeah. He had the. Uh, the yeah, Jaquan Brisker had he had just the um, he had the pick six, the fumble recovery. He there was no pick, pick six. six. What am I thinking of? Uh -uh. I'm thinking of the Philly game. Never mind. <laughs> I'm thinking of the Eagles <laughs> that, game. That's a different. Yeah, that, that's a different show. <laughs> that, that's Philadelphia tough sports, <laughs> not Chicago yeah. tough sports. My but bad. Um, no, um, Jaquan Brisker is, is a guy that plays hard and. Um, he's going to be that at times that 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 eighth guy in the box that the Bears decide to bring him down to, to help out with the run. He, he's pretty good in coverage, but it also allows uh, Eddie Jackson to go back to his more natural free safety position, in which you know which showed up in you know in the game when when he had that interception in the late in the third quarter. Yeah. So, 
Yeah, they they looked really. They didn't look great. They didn't look terrible, but that defense looked pretty sharp. No. They they looked pretty sharp. Yeah. Yeah. Let, let me uh, let me rephrase what I said about rather be lucky than good. Um, I, I've learned in, in coaching sports and playing sports, you make your own luck. So yep. um, the Bears definitely uh, did that by by you know being disciplined, but and also you know playing you know playing hard. If you do those two things. You you typically make your own luck. Yeah, you're gonna win a football game. Yeah, you're gonna win a football game. Yep. Yeah. Um, Justin Fields. Um, I, I I will still maintain that uh, Justin Fields will, uh, will be a better better. No, I'm not. I'm not going there tonight. Uh, Justin Fields um, will be a better pro than Trey Lance, and that's not saying that trans, Trey Lance is going to be a bad quarterback. I just think that. Um, what what Justin Fields can do um, is, is far superior to what Trey Lance can do, at least at this moment. Um, you know, you you saw a guy that that basically won the game because he 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 is the most athletic guy on the field, and you know that 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 touchdown that that fifty one yard touchdown pass that he threw to Dante Pettis was. A blown coverage, yeah, but it was also the fact that if you go back and look at that play, you had 11 eyes on him. Yep. As soon as he broke the pocket, everybody was looking at him yep. because everybody's afraid of, of, of his feet. Yep. I'm, uh, and, I'm very, I'm very it, happy that he, he learned how to slide. I didn't see him take too it many. It took videos. him a while. It took him a while. Um, I was actually pretty happy that you know, that they call some, un, you know, some unsportsmanlike. Yep. You know, because last year he wasn't getting that. Even in the preseason, yep. you know, he wasn't necessarily getting that call. Um, but I, I hope that, you know, the Bears front office sends some tapes to the league and say, hey, you know, you're all about protecting quarterbacks. Well, you got to protect our guy. Yep. And if he gives up, if he gives some stuff up, then that, that play's got to be dead. I mean, that there was one play where, I actually thought uh, he slid too soon, or it was like one of those like half slides. So I'm happy that they <laughs> blew the whistle. Um, but overall, with his performance, you know, it was up and down. He had one interception that, you know, as a fan, I'm like, dude, what are you looking at? Uh, he did miss a couple of passes that just just the wide receivers. There's one in particular, actually on the same play that he threw the interception. He missed Cole Komet in the flat. Um, but and then he also had, almost had a pick six, um, you know, in, in the third quarter. It was actually, I think, on that same drive as the 51-yard touchdown pass. Okay. But, hey, you know, those, those are the breaks that, you know, the football guys give you. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, so, you know, you, you, you go ahead and do that, you know. And then on the, on the last touchdown pass that he threw, that was just a beautiful design. Um, he actually had two guys open if he, if he wanted to hit Pringle coming across the middle, but he had uh, St. Brown on, on, a, on, a, on a beautiful uh, corner route in the end zone. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I'm sure you remember I texted you guys. I think it was in the first quarter. What did I say? Is it too soon to worry about the offensive line or to complain about the offensive line? That's still a bit of a concern for me. He took some – he took a couple of hits that kind of made me kind of grip the armrest on my couch saying, oh, my God, is he okay? Well, I mean, you, you, I think you have to understand, too, that that, that 49er front four, that, 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 that's that's good. No, I, I understand that. that. I, I agree with you 100%. There were just a few plays where it didn't even seem like they were even remotely blocked. Like they just came right through the gap. And they got the well, and, and, so, and some of those are you know, there, there, there were a few screen passes that they threw, yeah. That I know David Montgomery, um, caught one, and that was basically just Justin Fields just making a play with his arm, yep. You know, when he changed the arm angle, um, and kind of threw a Patrick Mahomes style, yeah. He even did a little pit, Mahomes, um, and, right? The little, it, oh, yeah, yeah, and then there was, you know, a, a couple of passes that, like I said, get out of the pocket and through, and, you know, but that, that offensive line is going to get better. Yeah. Um, 
you know, they, they actually they, they had a, a guy in Lucas Patrick who was playing with a, with a club on his hand. Mm. You know, him and Seven Jenkins were rotating at, at right guard. Uh, you know, but, you know, the, if that's the case, the 49ers need to worry about their offensive line, too. What, what did you think of um, – what did you feel about David Montgomery's usage? You know, it's, it's interesting. I actually have that on my list of things to discuss. Okay. All right, let's, let's <laughs> um, jump into it then. Well, it, it's weird because I, I like David Montgomery. Yeah. But, you know, he, after the first game, I think he only averaged maybe a yard or two a carry. And the best running back of the two was, uh, was Khalil Herbert. Yeah. Uh, so I need to see I, – I need to see more – uh, from David Montgomery. Uh, I just need him to hit the hole and just go instead of just dancing, um, you know, in the backfield, then going. Just take your one cut and go. Okay. And, and that, that's what I need for him to, to do more of uh, as a fan. Um, but to be honest with you, uh, there, there, was, <laughs> there was some situations where even when the Bears tried to run the ball, there was a certain 49er, number 29, that, that was making like every tackle. And that, and that, and that guy is going to be so good, so good. Um, but I, I think David Montgomery will be okay. Um, it's just that, you know, after the first game, you're, you know, you don't want to overreact to individual performances in terms oh, of, of if they're bad or not. Um, but, you know, it, it, it my guess is that it's always easier, especially when I coach football, it's always easier to correct, um, you know, mistakes or plays or anything like that after a win. Okay. You feel he'll be a, a thousand yard rusher? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, if he stays healthy, I think, you know, within this offense, he can run 1100, more from 1100 yards, okay. but you know, the question is always going to come back to is, 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 you know, will he get the carries, number one? Um, number two, are the Bears, you know, I, I think the Bears will be still be in football games, but, you know, you have Sunday, I think the Bears are going to get blown out every week. So if you get blown out every week, you're not going to run the football. But also number two, uh, the last, excuse me, the last, the last part is, um, with the kind of offense that they run, um, it isn't predicated. It isn't predicated on one particular back. You know, you could have multiple backs going in there and get the stuff. I mean, go back and look at the old uh, Denver Broncos. The Denver Broncos r- running the same, the same kind of offense in a way of uh, the zone blocking scheme, where they have multiple thousand yard backs after Terrell Davis retired. Okay. So I mean, it, it's the it's the you know it like if David Montgomery gets hurt, I'm I'm perfectly content with Khalil Herbert running the ball. Absolutely. Pass protection, different story. Run, uh, running, he'll be all right. Yeah. Speaking of pass protection, a few of those screen plays, I'd I'd like to see David Montgomery give a little bit better of that that little shoulder chip block before he he goes out for the pass. Um, yeah. There were a few he barely leaned into it. You know, I mean, you have to do some kind of blocking. You know, you have to protect your quarterback. Yeah, and 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 that's one. And honestly, that's one of his stronger pursuits. Um, I was talking to a buddy of mine, and we were kind of figuring out like the Bears' uh, running back situation. I said, if David Montgomery goes down, I'm concerned about pass blocking because David Montgomery is the best pass, you know, pass blocker of all the running backs that they have. Yeah. Um, but that'll get better. That'll get better. I, I'm I'm actually happy the Bears are running screens. Yeah. Yep. That they, that what you see is 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 an actual competent NFL offense. Yep. When, competent NFL coaching. When when your when your offensive coordinator whoever is is calling the screen pass, that means you have. A f- you have nothing but trust in your offensive line, your running back, and your quarterback, mainly your offensive line. You have full confidence in 
you feel they're competent enough to run run the screen pass. Yeah, I mean, it, it, there's also you know, is, you also kind of run screens to to get to get the defense off balance. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I used to do when I when I coached was, I if I knew that that a, a defensive line was was more athletic than my offensive line in terms of getting up the field, I kind of use that against them and, and, and run screens. You know, you kind of use their speed against them. You can't block and you screen them. <laughs> yeah. Always something that I've been told. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what else to talk about unless you have something else you want to you want to lay down here. Well, I mean, like I said, it, 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 it's, it's week one um, of a 17-week season. Yeah. Bears fans should be should be happy, you know. You know, it, 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 they're able to shut up the you know the national media for at least a week. Um, but you know, we'll see. You now the Bears got to get better. I, I I still saw some things. There's some missed tackles. But you know what the funny, the great thing about this is, you actually have a coaching staff that will actually keep these keep these players accountable. And they have this philosophy um, that that basically holds them to that. You know, they have this loaf. And, and I know that, you know, there's certain fans that hated the, the Lovey Smith era. But honestly, that was, since 85, that, that was the best era in Bears football. Yeah. You know, so, and, and that defense from 2005 up until about, I don't know, 2009 or 10 was, well, up until Lovey got fired, was was really good. Yeah. It was really good. Yeah, well, he was a defensive guy anyways. Yeah, and, and look, and you don't necessarily need an offensive coach to, to lead your team. We talked about this last year with Nagy. Yeah. You know, I, I, I said that, and I, and I told a, you know, a buddy of mine when, when we were talking about who, who should replace him. Like, I didn't care if it was an offensive coordinator, a defensive coordinator, a special teams guy. Give me a leader of men. Yeah. Yeah. Give me that guy. And I feel like Eberfuss is that guy that can lead this team. And, and they're buying in. They're buying in. And they're flying around the ball, you know, playing discipline. And, and, and that's going to keep them in a, in a lot of games in which, you know, on paper, they probably shouldn't be in. No. Like, like this past one with the 49ers. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed uh, Ibra Flutes' um, press conference on Monday, uh, yesterday. Well, it, I looked. It was really good. It was yeah, really, I mean, it, it was, it was refreshing to hear something other than we need to focus on the little things. Or what would Nagy say? Oh, we need to find the why? You, there you go. Yeah, the why. We have to find the why. That, that was so damn annoying hearing that and it was refreshing to hear well, that's it. what's up going no oh, go ahead no i was just gonna say it was it was refreshing to hear competence in a head coach talking it was yeah. refreshing the first thing out one of the first things out of his mouth was i want to thank the fans for coming out and sitting through that and cheering and and sticking with us through that and then and then he thanked the coaching staff and the players and it was just – it's a nice change of scenery in week one. Yeah, you, you know what? He, he actually did that during training camp and even part – I'm sorry, um, OTAs and mini camp where he thanked the players for showing up. Yeah. I mean, and, and that goes a long way with, with your players. You know, players want to be treated like men. Yep. You know, and, and they want to know what your agenda is, you know, and – how can how can you help me maximize my potential? Yep. And that's what and that's what you know this coaching staff is about. They, they got even who said it himself. You know, he brought in teachers. And in, from Justin Fields on down to the punter. And by the way, just speaking of him, Trenton Gill, the punter, I have never heard of that rule. Unsportsmanlike conduct because he was using a towel to, to you know, kind of drive up an area on the field. Yeah, that's. I, I I've don't never heard of that. I don't even know how to comment on that. So I'll just say I know what you're talking about. 
I know what you're well, saying. Well, here's here's my other issue with when people say, "Oh, well, well, the rain." If it wasn't for the rain, the Forty Nineers would have been able to do something. I don't. Another reason why I don't buy that because the rain cost the Bears five points, so it should have been twenty-four to ten okay. that the Bears should have won. Because you got the two missed uh, extra points. And then you had the unsportsmanlike penalty that, that took him out of field goal range before halftime. Okay. And I'll give them credit. I'll give the Bears some credit on this. They, after that, that Matt Nagy team from last year would have quit. Yeah. But they didn't. They, they, or even the, the tuck, or even uh, going up 10 nothing, um, coming out of the gate, and the, the 49ers are coming out of, the, uh, the, coming out of halftime. You know, uh, another regime team would have quit, but there, there's no quit. Yeah. Or as we would say, Eberflus's boys don't quit. <laughs> there you go. Yep, that, that's going to be the new saying now. Eberflus's mm-hmm. boys don't quit. <laughs> yep. But, yeah, I mean, that, that, that's all I have. Um, it, it should be an inter- interesting season. Yeah. Uh, just for the simple fact that, you know, the regime is new. Uh, Justin Fields is kind of um, he should have a good year and a- as we move forward you know weeks 2 through 17 you should see a better Justin Fields than we saw in week 1 and definitely better than what you saw last year yes absolutely and and, and there will be some pro bowlers uh, maybe not this well maybe not this year on offense but there will be some down, down the line Ah, future predictions, huh? Yeah, yeah. Look, Donovan Williams will be a wide receiver. Um, you know, the Bears are going to have some nice offensive linemen that they're, they're going to be uh, um, Pro Bowlers. Okay. And 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 that defensive line, Dominic Robinson, that dude's good. Mm. And, and he's one here. And last, I believe last year was his first year playing defensive end. He, he was a quarterback and a quarterback and a tight end or a running or, or a wide receiver, and then they moved into the defensive end. What a transition, huh? <laughs> Just a, a freak athlete. Just a freak athlete. Yeah. So, well, with all that being said, uh, Friday we'll be doing our our week two. They have Green Bay Sunday mm-hmm. night, right? Yep. So prime time, very big game. Already in the second week of the season, huge game for the Bears. Uh, without, well, without, I'll, I'll, without getting without getting too much into it, uh, what, you think they'll pull? You think they'll pull out a victory or what? Well, I I, I think so, but um, this game is huge, um, and I'll go into more detail on Friday. Yep. But this. This is huge because if the Packers lose this game, you're already down two in, in, in the division. Yep. They lost Sunday against the, the Vikings. So, you know, if anything, this, this game is more crucial for the, the Packers than it is the Bears. I, I, I'll say the, the Bears will go 2-0. and And uh, I'll add that Aaron Rodgers was exposed on Sunday. That's all I'll say. I'll, I'll, get, I'll get into it a little deeper on Friday. Yeah. So, well, I guess that's it for tonight. Bears win week one. They're one and oh. Sunday night, Sunday night football, prime time against the Packers in Lambeau. Yep. It's supposed to rain. <laughs> hey, if, if if the Bears can play well, win games in rain, let it pour, man. Let it pour. Cats and dogs. Yep. So, all right. Well, I guess that'll do it for tonight. Uh, Thanks for tuning in. Make sure you like and subscribe. Check us out. All right, Hitman, I'll talk to you later, bro. Yep.